Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. So today I'm down at Alta Auto Group. We're going to check out the latest generation for the Dodge Challenger SRT Hellcat Red Eye. So huge shout out to them for providing this muscle car for me today. Make sure you guys check out their website. They have a lot of awesome pre-owned inventory. That link is down below. But the Challenger that you see behind me is finished off in bright white and they have an MSRP right around $85,000. And to start off today's review, we're going to take a look at what powers this Hellcat Red Eye. Underneath the hood is the 6.2 liter supercharged Hemi V8 engine paired to the eight speed automatic transmission. It pumps out 797 horsepower and 707 pound feet of torque. That power is sent to the rear wheels. This weighs in right around 4,500 pounds. It'll do zero to 60 in 3.6 seconds up to its top speed of 203 miles an hour. And it has a fuel capacity of 18 and a half gallons You'll expect to see around 13 miles per gallon in the city and 22 out on the highway. This has a wheelbase of 116.2 inches. Its overall length is 197.5. It has a width of 75.7 and a height of 57.2 inches. As we move on to the exterior styling now for this Dodge Challenger, let's start off with the LED headlights, DRLs, and turn signals, along with the cutout that you see on the inner housing. So on the outer housing is the headlights, on the inner housing is the turn signal and the DRL, and then there's also a hollow cutout on both sides to provide even more cooling to that supercharged engine. Really cool how that is designed. There's even more cutouts in the upper section of the grille with SRT over on that driver's side. A lot more cutouts down in the lower section as well as the functional hood scoops which also give a nice bulge to this hood there's two individual bulges just to give it that unique look and this even has a very large front spoiler finished off in that black trim piece wrapping around the entire lower section definitely very functional for this muscle car and as we move on to the side profile now this has a really nice set of 20 inch wheels finished off in matte black with the brembo brake calipers just behind that Great contrast against this exterior white. The Hellcat badge with the red eye logo is just behind that. No sunroof for this model. It does have black window trim, which gives it a really nice look, as well as that distinctive line running just underneath the door handle all the way to the rear end. And then last up for the rear is matte black on the spoiler with the SRT badge. This has a backup camera that's nicely incorporated right in the middle. It even has LED taillights with that dual ovalish style design. Dodge is right in the middle, and then there's parking sensors in the lower section, as well as more of that black plastic trim, and then the dual exhaust on both sides, which we'll start up later in today's video. So with the exterior wrapped up, let's move on to the cargo space. You can use the button on the key fob, or this one placed just up underneath, which will release the trunk lid. And as you can tell, there's a lot of storage space, huge cutouts on the driver and passenger side to put an item sideways. The back seats also fold down as well to provide you with a lot more storage. And then up underneath the floor, if I lift this up, a lot more storage as well as a tire inflator kit, access to the battery, a little bit more storage space. So it's great to see that utilized space. Now there's no grab handle, so all I need to do is grab on the tail light. I can easily close that up. And moving on to the interior, to unlock this, all I need to do is place my hand up underneath. Pushing on that black button on the top will lock it, of course. And this door panel has a really nice design with the black leather and stitching. It also has a split style for the storage. There's a little bit in the back section, a little bit in the front section. Really nice black chrome on the release handle. All of the window controls and side mirror adjustments are just above that. And this model even has the Alpine audio sound system. And then looking at these seats, they are finished off in cloth. Really good lateral support to them. SRT is also right in the middle. Cool insert running down them just to give them that two-tone design. Now these are power adjusting for forwards and backwards. However, there is a lever on the side to use to incline and recline. There's also a lever on the back section to go ahead and move that forwards in order to gain access to the back seats. So at five foot 10, I can work my way into the back where I do have a good amount of space with the front seat set at my height. I could move this a little bit farther forward if I needed to. There's a storage pocket behind both front seats as well. And then as far as headroom goes, I have right about half an inch or so, but I don't have to hunch down. I can easily sit up straight and be comfortable in the back of this two-door vehicle. So that is really impressive. You could have two other people back here as well. We have the center armrest along with two cup holders, and then right in the middle are two air vents, so at least your backseat passengers can get some climates. Taking a look out of the back glass now, that pillar is pretty bulky like I mentioned earlier, but there's large glass on both sides. There's even an armrest on the back too. So you can definitely be comfortable if you need to be in the back seats of this. And then as we move back to these front seats now with them locked in, the door sill is very low. So I can easily step up over it 
and make our way to the steering wheel, which has a two-tone finish with the perforated and solid leather, more of that white stitching. The door panel also opens up very wide, so that makes it easy to enter and exit. Well, let's fire this up. With my foot on the brake, that button is over on this right side. We can bring this to life. And coming back to this gauge cluster, on the left side is the tack, on the right side is the miles per hour, and you'll notice too that the background for each of those is finished off in red for this red eye. Really nice touch to see. Right in the middle is the LCD screen where you can go through a lot more information using these buttons over on the left side. This even has Bluetooth and voice commands. Cruise control is over on the right side, and it does have steering wheel mounted paddle shifters. Now underneath those are volume and tuning for the radio. So those are on each side, of course, which is great. And then using these controls, currently it's showing some trip information. If I scroll down, you can look at audio as well as any messages when your phone is paired. There's even the screen setup. So in the upper right and the upper left, those are configurable along with the center screen. So you can pull up some other information just depending on what you'd like to see. If I scroll one more down, we can go through any diagnostics, and then we can also look at the speed warning. Back at the beginning is the speedometer, and then there's even a lot of vitals to scroll through and monitor, just depending on what you need to see and what you need to pull up. There's TPMS. We have a lot of performance under the performance tabs. You can look at your lap timer, there's G-forces, there's even braking distance, quarter mile times, zero to 60, zero to 100. Really cool to see that in a factory vehicle. There's also the fuel economy, which may not be important to you. And we're back to that trip information. And then over on this left side is the headlight adjustments as well as dimmer switches, a release for the trunk. This even has a foot parking brake, which you can use. Cool trim pieces surround one air vent. And then right in the middle is the 8.4 inch touchscreen system. Currently you can see in the lower section, all of these presets, which are configurable. So you can drag and drop icons to the bottom, depending on what you use the most. Currently it has media. We can go into the climates as well. This does have heated front seats as well as a heated steering wheel. You can control where you like the air to go, all of those other controls up top, even the fan speed. And then under apps, like I mentioned earlier, if there's something that you use a lot, like SRT mode, if I click on that, hold it, I can drag it down to the bottom where now we have a shortcut to that icon and you can go through a lot of information for track, custom, sport, you have auto. You can adjust all of these depending on how you would like this set up. We have another shortcut to those controls as well. General settings is over on the far right side. And then going back to the apps, there's even a performance page tab that we can go into and look at a lot more information. These are all stats here that will pull up depending on what you're doing with the car. We have different gauges to monitor, the G-force meter, you can pull up in a larger screen, all of the engine diagnostics, even a dyno with the screen. So if I give this some gas, you can see those adjust. Really neat to see that in a vehicle like this. We have the horsepower number as well as G-force meter again. And then as we make our way to the sides, there's an air vent on both sides, more of that trim piece surrounding it. In the lower section, there is a screen off button, so you can turn that off. You can mute the audio. Volume and power is on the left side, tuning is on the right side. And then right in the middle is traction control as well as the parking sensors. You can activate launch control. There's a shortcut to the SRT mode, which I already showed. And then even physical buttons for the climate controls with the fan speed right in the middle, you can shut it off. Dual zone on both sides, obviously, so you can adjust those as needed. If you're not in that upper screen, you can quickly get to it. There's a little bit of storage on the right side of the shifter. And then with my foot on the brake, if I put this into reverse, the backup camera will appear with all of those guidelines. And then you can put this into the manual setting, shift using the shifter or the paddle shifters themselves. There are two cup holders behind that. We have more of the stitching and leather, which wraps around leading all the way to the center armrest. And if I open this up, there's a 12 volt, two USBs and an auxiliary, along with a good amount of storage space. You can put your charging cables out and around so that way you can still charge them. There's a split style to the glove box. So plenty of room for all of that information. We'll take one last look at these seats. Really nice lateral support to them. And then up in the center, there is a sunglass holder, which is really convenient, as well as the dome lights and a few garage door buttons. As we get behind the wheel of this Challenger SRT Hellcat Red Eye now, I just finished reviewing a Charger Hellcat wide body, which you can get for this Challenger. And it's pretty cool to drive these back to back. I feel like this particular model has an aftermarket exhaust on it because it is much louder than I'm used to. still get that supercharger whine which I can't get over every time I drive 
one of these Dodges, the supercharger whine is the coolest sounding noise that you could possibly have, especially when you pair it with the exhaust note that that V8 engine makes. And so I'm gonna put it into the track setting with what it's going to automatically configure for me. And a quick uh, mild acceleration from third gear there. We'll get on it here in just a little. It has a good amount of power. It's very smooth in the power too. And I like the feedback from these paddle shifters. I do wish they were a little bit larger. However, we have those controls on the backside, which I mentioned earlier, which I think is cool. It's kind of a, a dual purpose. They have, uh, there's a few blanks actually on this model here where maybe they could have put some of those buttons. <laughs> if I, now if I can get it to do it, when I let off the gas, there are pops in this exhaust. That's why I think it's aftermarket. It's just a little bit louder than I'm used to. Uh, but the paddle shifters, like I said, are very responsive. And I feel like this is a little bit bulkier on the inside than the charger that I was just in. And the reason that I think that is just because it's a little bit shorter. We have that pillar over the right shoulder there. And so I think that kind of makes it a little bit more tight feeling. Uh, but as far as visibility goes, even though it feels tight, you can still see all around. I know that's a large pillar and it's even pretty large over on this left side, uh, but I can see all around. I can see out of my side mirrors as well. And so visibility isn't an issue, but let's give it a little bit more gas now. Now this is a heavy vehicle, uh, but that got up and moved. And obviously there are so many different performance settings that you can use where you can drive this right off the factory lot, break it in, and then take it to the drag strip. You can get on some back roads like I am right now, uh, but I think it's mainly designed for that straight line performance since it is a bit of a, a heavy two-door vehicle. But it's so cool to see the performance that you get from these Hellcat engines. You can easily tune these and mod them to get a thousand horsepower to those rear wheels. You definitely have a beast of a vehicle. is so much fun to drive as far as just driving it now without of all of the uh, engine performance it's very comfortable very smooth to drive you can hear that exhaust you can hear that supercharger but just driving this like a daily with cars passing it just seems like what you would expect for a sports car like this as we switch over to the pov angle now quick look at visibility over this side so you can get a perspective from this angle same with over my left shoulder there I'm sure you can hear that supercharger whine. Does not get old. And a little bumpy of a ride, but I will say it is smooth. We do have the suspension in track right now. So if I dial it down to sport mode, you can feel a little bit of a difference. It definitely tightens up in that track setting though. So for the size of this, I like how you can adjust the suspension. So that way you can handle, that weight can be transferred in this car much better, especially when you go around turns. Now I'm not on any tight twisty turns for today, but trying to get that exhaust to pop a little bit. <laughs> and we'll do one last acceleration for today's video. Here we go. And we are up to speed just like that. But that's gonna wrap it up for my walk around review and test drive behind the wheel of the latest generation for the Dodge Challenger SRT Hellcat Red Eye. Once again, huge shout out to Alta Auto Group for providing this vehicle for me today. Check out their website. That information is down in the description below. And if you enjoyed today's video, give it a huge thumbs up and consider smashing that subscribe button so you don't miss out on our daily uploads. I will see you all in the next video.